Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today I have a few questions related to circadian preference. So the first question is, what is a chronotype? The second question is, is there a relationship between circadian preference and personality? And the third question is, Am I a morning person or an evening person? So I'll answer that one toward the end of the video. So the word circadian is really talking about the near 24-hour physiological rhythm that has been observed at every system level in nearly all plants and animals on the planet. It's controlled by internal factors like the self-sustaining oscillator mechanism, as well as external factors like temperature, physical activity, social relationships, light, and food consumption in environments where there are only internal factors, so where there are no external factors, no environmental cues, we see that the free running time of the human circadian cycle is actually about 25 hours. There's quite a bit of variance in human circadian rhythms, and this is where we get the whole idea of morningness and eveningness, so the morning type person and the evening type person. There have been twin studies that show about 50% of the variability in circadian preference can be attributed to genetics, so that leaves 50%, of course, for environmentability. So how do we define morningness and eveningness? Well, it's actually fairly straightforward. If an individual has morningness, if they're a morning-type person, they don't have any trouble getting up early in the morning, they're more alert in the morning as compared to evening-type people, and they tend to have a preference for morning activities. So they like the types of activities that occur in the morning. Sometimes morning people are referred to as larks. If somebody has eveningness, they tend to be more alert in the evening, they're able to sleep late in the morning, and they prefer afternoon and evening activities. Sometimes evening people are referred to as owls. So we have larks and owls, morning type people, and evening type people. Now there's a lot of debate about these two categories and whether they actually represent what's happening in real life. There are basically two schools of thought. One is that there's a continuum from morningness all the way over to eveningness, so somebody can essentially score somewhere on that continuum. For example, just like we see with personality traits like extroversion, somebody can be in the middle. This is referred to as unidimensionality. Another theory says that they're really separate dimensions, so they're best understood as categorical. So most people fall into one category or the other. The issue is still up for debate. We see some research studies treat the construct in one way, and other studies treat it another way, which makes comparing studies a little difficult. But other than that, we do get a fairly clear image about what's going on in terms of these constructs. Now, in terms of how many people fall into each category, if we're treating the construct categorically, around 30% of individuals are morning types, and about 20% are evening types, which of course leaves 50% for people who don't quite fit well into one category or the other. So again, we can kind of see the debate there about the continuum, the dimensional aspect versus the categorical aspect. Now sometimes a person's type really can't be expressed. They can't really honor their preference. For example, if someone has to get up early for work for many years, they may appear to be a morning type when they're really an evening type. And of course, the opposite could happen if somebody's required to work in the evenings over a long period of time. So the type of schedule somebody has may actually affect what chronotype they appear to have, but there's another theory that really says it may affect the actual chronotype, right? So we're not really sure, but either way, we see that's a factor. And we also see that somebody's chronotype may vary throughout the lifespan. Children tend to have morningness. Adolescents tend to move toward eveningness, with the maximum level of eveningness reached at age 20. Then we see an increase in morningness, especially after somebody passes age 50. In terms of gender, females tend to be more morning-oriented than males. Now we know that people with morningness tend to have higher life satisfaction, they experience less depression, anxiety, and stress, and they have lower levels of pessimism. People with eveningness tend to have more difficulty with mood and sleep problems, including a shorter duration of sleep and more daytime sleepiness. We also see they tend to consume more caffeine. Now, when we look at intelligence, it looks like maybe it's not all bad news for evening types. Some studies show that there's a higher intelligence level 
associated with evening type people. But then we see that morning people tend to do better in school, and then we see other research that indicates that the cognitive ability of morning and evening type people is actually the same. So again, just when we were about to see a silver lining for evening type people, the research literature just pulls the rug right out there. So what about psychopathology, right? What is the connection between chronotype and mental disorders? Well, morningness isn't tied to any psychopathology, but eveningness is. We see there's a higher risk of social anxiety disorder with eveningness and a higher risk of depression. Furthermore, we see twice the risk for substance use disorder with eveningness and three times the risk for personality disorders. On top of all this, the risk for subclinical mania is also elevated for evening type people, although again, we're talking about subclinical, not mania, which would of course be related to bipolar disorder. Now, morningness appears to actually be a protective factor against some disorders, including impulse control disorders and depressive disorders. Looking specifically at depression, if somebody has morningness and they do have a severe depressive episode, their prognosis is actually better than if they had eveningness. Now, it's important to note that in terms of the factors and the relationship to a chronotype, we don't know if mental disorders lead to the chronotype, or if the chronotype leads to mental disorders, or if there's a little bit of both going on. So really, it's about the difference between correlation and causation, right? We don't know what's causing what. We just know that there's a relationship. So how is circadian preference related to personality? So to answer this question, I'll be using the five-factor model of personality. I remember the big five traits through the acronym OCEAN, openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So in terms of openness to experience, starting with that trait, we see that in terms of looking at the research literature, there's some mixed findings, and then some literature indicates there's really no association between chronotype and openness, but there's some evidence of a negative correlation between openness and morningness. So perhaps morning type people don't really like abstraction as much, they tend to be less adventurous, tend to not have an appreciation for art. So all those characteristics related to openness. Moving on to conscientiousness, by far this has the strongest relationship to chronotype. We see that there is a positive correlation between conscientiousness and morningness. And again, this is the strongest relationship that we see across any of the personality traits and arguably really the only meaningful relationship that we see. In terms of extroversion, we see mixed findings. It's hard to draw any clear conclusion. There might be a small positive correlation between morningness and agreeableness, but overall, again, we kind of have mixed findings, and we have a lot of mixed findings for neuroticism. But the best evidence indicates that eveningness may actually be positively correlated with neuroticism. And given the relationship between eveningness and mental disorders, psychopathology, this isn't really surprising. Now, when we look at chronotype and personality, we run to the same situation about correlation versus causation, but we see there's an interesting theory that might shed some light on this topic. It's referred to as social jet lag, and there are variations of this theory, but essentially it says that evening-type people have to work against their natural clock, and this might explain some of the negative outcomes that they experience. Society is really more configured for morning types, which in one way really makes sense because there are a greater number of morning people than evening people. There is evidence that supports the idea that if evening type people are afforded more flexibility in terms of their work hours, they don't report more sleep-related problems than morning people, right? So the number of sleep-related problems become equal at that point. So with this in mind, it would make sense that some of the other stressors might be alleviated as well. So if somebody's sleeping better, perhaps their mood would improve as well. Now, morning type people can also experience social jet lag, but usually when we use that term, it's referring to the difficulty that evening people tend to experience. So now moving to that last question, what type am I? Interestingly, I'm actually an evening type person, which I really wasn't too worried about until I read all this research over the last six months on circadian preference, and I was like, wow, I'm not really doing so well if I'm an evening type person. But a lot of these associations I was talking about are fairly weak. Most of them are statistically significant, but they don't have a great effect. So it wouldn't be unusual for a morning type person to exhibit the characteristics that we see associated with the evening type person, like the psychopathology, 
and the opposite wouldn't be unusual either. So we have to be careful when looking at significance versus effect size. Now I'm actually fairly certain that my true chronotype is that eveningness like I indicated, but I can't be 100% sure because my schedule actually requires evening work. I almost exclusively teach at night. So I may go to work on a night that I teach around 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I might not get home until sometime between 10 or 11, sometimes even later. Now, of course, I don't teach every night of the week, but even if you have a few of those types of evenings, like where you have to work in the evening, it really makes it difficult to get on a day schedule. It kind of shifts everything toward the evening. It's just easier. For example, on a week where I have to teach twice, it's just easier to kind of go through the whole week like that, right? Getting up a little later and staying up a little later at night. On top of that, I really don't like coming home from work and then going right to bed. It's just not part of my personality. I don't know where it came from, what it's about, but I've never liked doing that. So again, if I'm getting home at say 10 or 11, I usually stay up till midnight, one or two, right? So I'm on a very late schedule compared to most people in my position, right? Most people who work as a professor and kind of do the other things that I do. On top of this, in terms of evidence that I truly am an evening type person, when I was much younger, like 25, 30 years ago, it wasn't unusual for me to have really early schedules with the different work that I did. Getting up sometimes at three in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning. I did that for many years and it never felt right. I was never satisfied with that schedule, right? It was draining and it wasn't until later on in the day when I felt kind of more active. So I think kind of looking at everything, I'm pretty sure I am truly an evening type. And I'll just have to live with all those different associations that come with being an evening type and just hope that even though there are some negative associations there, that with that weak effect size, I might be okay. I don't know. We'll have to see. But whenever you read a lot of research literature about a construct that relates to you, it becomes hard not to become a little concerned, right? You start reading about like all these things, again, associated with evening type person or whatever it is you're looking at. It's better to break that up over time. And it's not unusual for me to take an idea and read about it a little bit and then revisit it a few months later. So by the time I make the video, I've been exposed to the construct for a while, as I mentioned with this construct, for about six months. And that's probably a lot better than if I started preparing for this video like two or three days ago, right? Because that'd be a lot of information about that evening type person that may be a little bit discouraging for me to be taking in at one time. So there it is. I'm an evening type person, and I hope I answered the other questions satisfactorily as well. I know whenever I talk about topics like chronotypes, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate a really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.